I wanted to just take a moment out of the Twitter fest and all of the chaos to bring some attention to an article that one person posted online and brought some attention to. And this is an article written by Milo back in September of 2012. For reasons of copyright, I'm not going to read it all out, but I will read enough to make sure that you have a sense of what Milo was saying about the internet back in 2012. Glibness and superficial charm, manipulation of others, a grandiose sense of self, pathological lying, a lack of remorse, shame or guilt, shallow emotions, an incapacity to feel genuine love, a need for stimulation, frequent verbal outbursts, poor behavioral controls. These are just some of the things that social media are encouraging in all of us. They are also a pretty comprehensive diagnostic checklist for sociopathy in fact, that's where I got the list. There has always been abuse on the internet, but before the social revolution, it was largely restricted to anonymous comment threads, message boards, and chat rooms. Any site owner who allowed anonymous contents could reasonably be held responsible, morally and legally, for the content appearing on his site. But now there is a disturbing bleed from anonymous hatred to defamatory and spiteful language being posted under the author's real names, using their social networking profiles. It's as if our usual moral safeguards are being broken down by a terrifying new online landscape in which the default mode of communication is a form of attack. It's clear that existing hate speech laws are inadequate for the social media era. And if we decide, as we perhaps might, that a lifetime ban on the internet is unworkable and disproportionately punitive, given the centrality of the internet to our professional and personal lives these days, what on earth are we to do? No one has yet offered a convincing answer. In the meantime, we are all, bit by bit, growing ever more fearful of the next wave of molestation. Together with other commentators, I have in the past argued for verified identities on social networks, so those responsible for abuse and persecution of public figures and the vulnerable might be held accountable for their actions. That seems redundant when trolls are now so brazen they don't care about disapproving words from their loved ones back inside Facebook when they leave furious missives using that social network's commenting system elsewhere on the internet. So perhaps what's needed now is a bolder form of censure after all, because the internet is not a universal human right. If people cannot be trusted to treat one another with respect dignity, and consideration, perhaps they deserve to have their online freedoms curtailed. For sure, the best we could ever hope for is a smattering of unpopular show trials. But if the internet, ubiquitous as it now is, proves too dangerous in the hands of the psychologically frail, perhaps access to it ought to be restricted. We ban drunks from driving because they are a danger to others. Isn't it time we did the same to trolls? Ah, uh, yes, I'm just going to let you sit back and enjoy the irony of 2012 Milo and 2016 Milo. And that's something that if you think other people might enjoy, feel free to share. I've been Christy. You've been awesome. Thanks for your time and attention. Bye.